So today we are going back to the Forest of Galtrees golf course just outside York City Centre and today we're going to be playing the back nine on this course. In a recent video I played the front nine and you guys seem to enjoy that and a lot of you have asked if I can actually film the back nine so that's what we're here to do today and I'm also secretly in my mind here to try and break 90. Now it was a Saturday afternoon and there'd just been a competition on and it was quite busy on the course. So in this video you're going to see me get a little frustrated with trying to play my best in front of the camera and also not hold people up and try and film this course to showcase how nice it actually is for you. So hopefully you enjoy the video, let's see how I get on. I did actually play the full 18 and I will post my full scorecard at the end. But for now, let's see how we do on the back nine at Forest of Galtrees. So the first shot on the back nine here is a pretty decent one. And to be fair, it's straight down the fairway. However, on this hole, hole 1 and hole 10, you're not often rewarded by a good drive. You're often blocked out by these oak trees because it's a dog leg to the left. So I'm just attempting a little punchy shot here with a 7 iron. It does clip the tree, but it manages to get in front of the green. Again, I'm trying a little bump and run. Which goes pretty successfully and gives me a par putt. Yeah, so good for distance, uphill about 10 foot, giving me a tap in for bogey. So this is one hole I did not want to upload to YouTube, but this is real golf and I get myself into a lot of bother on this hole. Back in the fairway, looking promising. And the third shot is topped. Yeah, you can see from my reaction, this is a terrible start. And right when I make good connection, I pull it left. Thankfully, my ball was findable, but it's not left me the best view to the flag. So I think I've got a 7 iron here, it might even be a 6, I think I'm just going to back the stands, punch it through. Which after ricocheting off about 4 trees, actually finds the middle of the fairway. Which actually give us a good look at the green, but now I'm in damage limitation mode. And I'm just trying to bump this up, get it on the green and give myself a putt. Which actually goes really well. And it gives me about a seven foot putt. Which obviously we miss, giving me a tap in for a triple bogey. Ouch. So the 12 here at Forest of Galtrees is a pretty simple hole, a very slight dog leg to the left with just these few small trees in your way. So I'm just laying up here with an 8 iron, giving me a nice little look at the green, which I thin straight through to the back. And this is for a bogey, got about six foot. Which thankfully drops. 
So it was at this point we noticed a lot of players suddenly coming up behind us. The front nine, which we'd played off camera, was really quiet. We had the course to ourselves. But suddenly it became very busy. I think a lot of people had jumped on to play nine holes. So let's see, will that affect how I play? Will I get a little bit flustered? Let's have a look. Let's go on to hole 13. So on this hole, it's about 147 yards, heavily guarded by some bunkers, which naturally I found. And then proceeded to blade my 58 degree straight over the back. And this putt is for bogey, which I leave woefully short. And we tap him for a double. So onto the 14th now, which is one of the longest holes. And you're going to notice me get a little frustrated now. There are people in front. There are people at the side. There's people waiting behind. And obviously, I then go and hit a really weak shot out to the right. So we let a lot of people through, but then obviously that held us up. You'll see here, I'm conscious there's people in front and I'm conscious there's people waiting on the tee box. And when you're filming, this isn't good for anybody. I was very conscious I was holding people up and maybe spoiling their round of golf, which I do not want to do for the sake of getting a video on YouTube. But we carried on and I try and recover here by just getting it back in the fairway. And for some reason, even the camera has given up on me and it started to go in slow motion. But even watching this now, I can kind of feel the anxiety building up. I was very conscious of the guys on the tee box who'd now been waiting quite a while. And then I go and duff one along the floor. Yeah, frustration's coming out a little bit now. I'm starting to rush. Everything's going through my head. And we splash one into the water. So I'm taking a penalty drop here. So we're hitting 4-6. And I thought this was right on target. But unfortunately comes up short and just goes into the bunker. And about the only bit of good luck I have on this hole is that I find a real nice soft lie in this bunker. And I'm able to get it out on the first attempt. I am now conscious that there's people been waiting behind me quite some time. So I'm really, really rushing now. And in fact, I cannot wait to get this hole over with. So here we are on this 15th hole par 4, it's a beautiful hole, again protected by a huge oak tree right in the middle of the fairway. We managed to avoid that and this looked like the perfect chip but it disappeared just over the bunker to find myself in this kind of wasteland. There's a, it looks like there's some animals or something been digging it up but I managed to get it out and we have a par putt. And that leaves us with a tap in for bogey. So we're on to the last three holes now, and this is a par three, 167 yards. And this is one of these holes that I never seem to play right. Let me know in the comments, do you have one of those holes at your course where you just, you know it's an easy hole, but you just never play it right. Oh, sweet. Yeah, that's a nice little chip giving us a look at par. And we give that a good go, it just comes up short, but it's an easy tapping bogey. 
So here we are on the 17th and this is actually one of my favourite holes on this course. You have to go over a beautiful pond and you have to avoid the three oak trees in the middle of the fairway. Thankfully I've just found a little gap in between the two and I'm hitting a little punch down hybrid and it actually goes really well. And you can see I zoomed in here because I thought it was actually going to go in the hole but it rolled just past for, by about 10-15 feet past but from there I'll take that shot every day. So we leave the birdie put terribly short. And the par put just misses by. And we tap him for a bogey. So the last hole is the 18th here, par four. And again, the camera's gone into slow motion but we actually hit a good one down the left-hand side of the fairway. Second shot, just round this corner very slightly, so I'm just progressing the ball up there. I think this was an eight iron. Which left is in a great position. I was tempted just to bump and run this up with all the drama with this round. I didn't want any more drama adding on the 18th. I actually managed to put a really good swing on this and it felt like the best swing of the day to be honest. Which left me about a 10 foot uphill putt for par. And golf's a crazy game isn't it? It's that last shot that makes you want to come back week on week and carry on playing. So not a great score in the end, 95 through the full 18. 45 on the front nine, which I played much better. I wasn't filming, much more relaxed. And shot 50 with two blowout holes on hole 11 and hole 14. But 95 is still one over my handicap, currently playing off 22. So that gives me a net score of 23, which is one over. The pressure of filming definitely got to me on that back nine and I was on target for breaking 80. But hey, that's golf. This is real golf played by a real high handicap player. I hope you enjoyed it though. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.